Armando Hasurugan, Biology and Medicine videos, uh, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan. Uh, you can also like here, please. Um, ask questions, and here you can ask questions, answer questions, and please post some interesting things such as your artworks, please. And you can also change the settings to uh, the highest quality settings for better graphics of these videos. Um, now this video is gonna we're gonna look at muscular dystrophy. Now muscular dystrophy is a group of familial disorders that cause degeneration of skeletal muscle fibers. Oh, hang on a sec. Let's upgrade the graphics. Yep. There are a few types of muscular dystrophy. Ones that we're going to look into are the Duchenne muscular dystrophy, Becker's muscular dystrophy, and the myotonic muscular dystrophy. Let's begin with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Now, Duchenne muscular dystrophy is an X-linked inherited disease, and it's caused by a deletion of a DNA segment or a single gene defect on the short arm of the X chromosome. So what does an X-linked inherited disease mean? Well, let's look at some genetics. In females, the sex chromosomes are the same, two Xs, and so they're referred to as homogametes. Of males, they have two distinct sex chromosomes, and so they're called heterogametes. Now, if we line up the father and the mother up, we have mother with XX, uh, homogametes, and the father with XY. Now, X-linked inherited disease means that the mutation or the deletion of the DNA segment is on the X chromosome, usually obviously in the woman, because the women have two X chromosomes. But this does not mean the female has the muscular dystrophy. She can, she can be the carrier. And the male is healthy in this case. So now if we do some cross sections, we have the defected X sex chromosome from the mother and the X chromosome from the father making a female. And again, another female, but a healthy one, and then we have the mutated X from the mother again, this time with the Y chromosome of the father making a male, and another male, XY here. So as you can see, we have two, two of the mutated X chromosomes. One will be female, and one will be male. And essentially, there's a 25% chance uh, of these, um, each of this happening. So if we look at the offspring, these, this partner will, will potentially have, most likely, two males and two females. And as we've seen, the mutated X uh, and a healthy X from the father will uh, form a female. But this female does not have to have the muscular dystrophy. She can be a potential carrier because there's a 25% chance of becoming a carrier. And this typically happens in females. And we also have another unaffected female, a healthy female. And here as well, we have XY, a male an unaffected male. And finally, this X and Y with the mutated X from the mother can possibly have a Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I hope you understood that. Um, if not, just look over it again. I hope you can. So what is Duchenne? Now let's look at it uh, in more detail, shall we? I hope I'm pronouncing it right also, hey. So Duchenne muscular dystrophy or DMD. Now it is a common, the most common form of muscular dystrophy. And in the world, one out of 3,500 males from birth are affected. And it clinically manifests five years of age or under. And it will eventually lead to the wheelchair dependence, unfortunately, uh, by the age of 10, to 12 years old. Some symptoms associated with uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It's typically muscle degeneration. We can see thin, weak thighs, we can see tiptoeing, we can see weak stomach muscles which protrudes the stomach out, we see shoulders and arms held back awkwardly because of the weakness around that area, we have the swayed back, to compensate and we have the weak butt muscles pushing the belly out even further we have thick calves however not muscular calves they mostly consist of fat so they're pseudo hypertrophied I think that's a word and we also have tightness on the Achilles tendon and also weak front leg muscles which contributes to the tiptoeing 
and also Duchenne muscular dystrophy sufferers have poor balance. They're, they're usually clumsy, and when they're children, they always fall over, usually. And there's also awkward walking um, seen in these sufferers. So let's look at the pathophysiology and look into what's happening in these muscles, the skeletal muscles. Well, in the skeletal muscles, there's actually found to be a lack of a protein called dystrophin. And this contributes to muscular dystrophy of Duchenne. So if we look at a Duchenne uh, muscle and compare with a normal muscle, let's look at the normal muscle first. Here we have the nucleus of a cell, muscle cell, and here we have the cell membrane. We have the DNA. DNA encodes for RNA. The RNA gets transferred to the cytosol and then codes by the ribosome for the protein, dystrophin. Now, if we zoom into here, we'll look at what dystrophin actually does in the muscle cells. So just, uh, here we have the cell membrane. Here, outside the cell membrane, we have a lot of calcium, and we have also proteins in the cell membrane. So here is a membrane, also called a sacrolemma. And here are some proteins, also known as glycoproteins, which connects with the outside. Now dystrophin, essentially what it does, is it anchors and interacts with these proteins to support the whole membrane structure and the connection between the inside of the cell to the outside. And that was for normal skeletal muscle. Now in Duchenne muscular dystrophy, there's a problem in the DNA, and it codes still for some form of RNA. But when it gets transferred to cytosol, it will essentially make a demented or bad dystrophin, which basically does not have any particular function. So essentially, if we zoom into the same structure we had, here's a cell membrane, and here are the proteins, you can see that the cell membrane is damaged, and the protein as well damaged because dystrophin doesn't anchor this whole structure. And so the membrane forms gaps which allows the calcium ions, which are usually on the outside, to come inside. And this influx of calcium ion causes the cell to die, causes necrosis of the muscle cells, and so muscular dystrophy, or in this case, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So we just looked at Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Now, Becker's muscular dystrophy is the same as Duchenne muscular dystrophy, but it's less severe and has a slower progression. Now for myotonic muscular dystrophy. Now, myotonic muscular dystrophy. Now, myotonic, what does it mean? Well, let's break it down. Myotonic, myotonia means sustained contraction of the muscle. Dystrophy, as we know, is progressive loss of skeletal muscle. But actually, dystrophy can mean any type of muscle being degenerated. And myotonic dystrophy is an autosomal dominant trait. So if we look at a molecular level and look at the DNA, there's a specific sequence in the DNA that predisposes the person to this type of disease. So myotonic dystrophy is associ associated with a CTG trinucleotide repeat expansion on chromosome number 19. So essentially, if the chromosome number 19 have a lot of CTG sequences, a lot, um, it, it predisposes the person, or the person is most likely to have this form of dystrophy. Myotonic dystrophy is the most common form of muscular dystrophy in adults. And if you remember, the Duchenne muscular dystrophy is usually common in children. Now, myotonic muscular dystrophy, uh, essentially you have the symptom of sustained involuntary contraction. So, for example, if you shake someone's hand, there's difficulty in releasing the grip. And this is because the muscle in your hands are still contracting, and so it takes a while for this contraction to disappear. Other associated symptoms with myotonic dystrophy. The sufferer may have a pro prominent forehead, a narrow face, baldness, cataract formation in the eyes, and a poorly developed chin. Myotonic and Duchenne muscular dystrophy and as well as any other type of muscular dystrophy, can get very serious, extremely serious and life-threatening when there's difficulty in swallowing and difficulty in breathing. As of yet, there is no cure for muscular dystrophy, and it's such a serious condition. But there are a lot of foundations out there that try to find a cure, and so supporting these foundations would mean a lot. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe.